Okay. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you. Oh, Malkir, where are you? <clears throat> you look like you are in a warm place. Sri Lanka. Wait for me, I'm coming. <laughs> well, I want to have some tips from you when uh, one day, because I've never been there, I want to go. I would like to. Cool. Looking good. Stay there. Don't move. And uh, when you're ready, just let your eyes close. Hmm. Just arriving here a little more. Collect all your energy inward. Through your awareness, allow yourself to feel the body more. How does it feel? And see if you can let go of any unnecessary holding. Notice that as you relax the body more, there is also a sense of stillness settling in. And a little more spaciousness inside. A calmness. Keep relaxing the body. Feeling yourself more grounded through the weight of the body and the attraction of the earth towards itself. You are slowly arriving more and more in this place where you are. Let yourself really sink into that place. Not 
noticing also a slight pull upwards on the top of the head. that helps your neck to be aligned with your spine and from the shoulders down keep feeling that pull of the earth so let everything fall from the shoulders downward and keep feeling an uplift on the neck and the head, top of the head. your attention to the breathing that is happening by itself. Notice the feeling, the sensation of the air coming in and out Notice a feeling of expansion as you breathe in. As your body is making space for all this energy, all this prana coming in. Getting revitalized. and a deeper relaxation and letting go as you breathe out. Letting go of everything. See if you are relaxed at a point where you can feel the body is breathing by itself without interfering in any way. In this moment, your consciousness doesn't need to do anything. Except witnessing what is observing. serving 
watching the body breathing without you having to do anything it's a beautiful feeling when that happens Becoming aware of this miracle that is happening where the body is breathing by itself, your heart is pumping by itself, blood is circulating by itself. Millions of functions at a cell levels are happening by itself. Without your intervention. Just becoming aware of that can bring a deep relaxation and a feeling of sometimes separation between the body and the consciousness. feeling that you are the one observing all this happening in the body which is just a home your house in this dimension of form Keep observing anything that arises in that in your inner space. Remaining aware that you are the one that is observing and not what is arising. 
so you are free to allow for any experience. including the perception of this inner space that at times feels empty. When nothing moves, it feels calm, like a lake without a ripple. And other times you notice experiences arising of any kind. You just keep watching without holding on to anything. Not holding on to anything brings freedom. Freedom to be just the observing awareness.
it's slowly coming back. When we sit in this way, it's much easier to notice the inner movement, mm -hmm. how the movement of the mind, the different perceptions, the different experiences that are happening. It's easier when we sit with closed eyes than when we're doing things during the day, isn't it? Because there's nothing happening, nothing moving, we're not doing anything. So everything is, as we say, in our face, no? right, obvious. So we also notice the movement of the mind more, isn't it? It seems like, my God, when I close my eyes, my mind starts and never stops. Sometimes like that. But actually, yeah, sometimes it is like that. Sometimes it's just that you're noticing more the mind. It's always running in the background. Why is it always running? It's running because it's a habit. We got used to it. What is a habit? A habit is something that you do one time, two times, three times, hundred times, thousand times, until it becomes a habit. Imagine, for example, that since you were like two years old, they give you a little glass, very little glass with a liquid that is a little bitter, not so good. But you get you get used a little bit. The first time it's like, oh, I don't like it. But you keep drinking it every morning. And the years go by and you, after a while, you actually like it. You get so used to it. And 20, 30, 40 years later, you're still drinking it. And if you stop drinking it, you feel like, whoa, something is really missing. It's uncomfortable because it became a habit. It's not particularly good and you don't need it, but still, you've done it every day of your life. So if you stop drinking it, there is a vacuum. Something is missing. You feel uncomfortable. You want to drink it. Even if it doesn't, you don't need it. Even if it doesn't taste that good. So that's what a habit is, for example. Then, of course, smoking cigarettes or whatever. Those are habits that are pretty much the same. No, You keep doing it until you get so used to it that if you stop, you feel totally uncomfortable. Hmm? Both energetically, psychologically, and your all physical body feels uncomfortable because something is missing suddenly. So it's the same with the mind. You know? We have been using it since the early childhood, learned to use it. And it came very useful, yeah, because you need it to function in the world. So one more reason to keep using it. It's like, oh, wow, well, okay, if I use it more, I can function better in the world, even. 
if I use it more, I can get more things done. Yeah, you start thinking like that and observing, yeah, it's great. So you keep thinking. And you think, well, wait, if I think a little more, maybe I can make things happen better. So you think more. And it becomes a habit. To the point that if you stop thinking, you feel like something is missing. You get identified with this thinking mind. Because you that's what you do over and over again. So it's like, if you don't think, you feel like you don't exist almost. Nothing is happening. But when we sit and we close our eyes, we don't need to function in the world, you see. There is no need to think, right? We're just sitting. We are, we're not trying to do anything. And yet, we think. Yeah, it's the same with that little glass. I, you don't need to drink it every morning. It doesn't even taste good. But still, you need to drink it because you got a habit, you know? So to understand and observe this is important. Thinking is just a habit. It's not needed. Sometimes it is needed when you have to function in the world, you know, when you have to plan something, you need project, you have some even creative projects, sometimes you need to think about it. But are you able to sit and stop it when it's not needed? Yeah, that's the real freedom. That's what we are practicing. But at the same time, a direct approach to that stopping is not possible. Because if you try to stop the mind, it's a doing again. It's again the mind trying to stop the mind. So what to do? What we can do is to start bringing more and more attention to the gap that exists between one thought and the other. When one thought ends before another, no, because you, let's say you're lost in a thought, yeah? And it runs and runs and runs and you, you thought you were sitting meditating and suddenly you're like thinking about, yeah, maybe I should go to Sri Lanka too. Oh, look at Malky, you know, it looks really happy, it's warm and, you know, whatever. And you go around the whole world while you're sitting there trying to just be, yeah? And then suddenly you notice that and you go like, whoa, I was in Sri Lanka, holy shit. And in that moment, notice what happens. In that moment, the thought stops and there is a gap. There is a space of no mind. Especially if you don't start immediately going like, oh man, I'm such a bad meditator, I was already in Sri Lanka, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so the mind doesn't stop. If you start judging what you see, the mind doesn't stop. So very important, choiceless awareness. Mm -hmm. So you notice the thought, and then you notice, instead of going into judging yourself because you were thinking, you simply watch again what is happening and you will see that in a fraction of a second you move from being lost in the mind to be present yeah realize that don't beat yourself up because you're thinking realize that you're already present in that moment it takes a fraction of a second so there's nothing to judge there's nothing to worry about because you're already present in the moment itself, that you notice you're thinking, you're present. The mind stops. And then give that attention, that energy, let's call it, to that gap. 
That's what we can do. So not start going into judgment because it keeps reactivating the mind. Simply watching what is and what is is that suddenly the mind stopped and there is a space. That, simply that. Bring the attention to that space. And let it be. Let yourself be in that space. That's what we can do. There's nothing else we can do. If we keep doing that, there's a simple, call it exercise or practice, you know, simple practice that I described. What happens is that slowly, slowly, you almost create a different habit or anyway, your whole system gets used to function in a space where the mind is not running. Yeah, so we're trying to break that habit, that identification with the thinking mind. It's not easy to break a habit that is there since a lifetime. You know, right? If somebody has been smoking for 20 years, they know how difficult it is to stop smoking. But this is the trick. Hmm? So we simply learn, really learn. Because when we were a child, children, it was easier to stay in a space of no mind. We really learn to be in a space where the mind is not running. Hmm? Simply that. So we are training ourselves to break that habit. And as I was saying, it's not a direct approach, but it's uh, almost like tricking the mind coming from the back door. It's like we don't give energy to the mind by starting judging it, for example, or by keep believing that we it's this thought is really important. Wait, wait, I have to finish it because then, you know, I can do this and that and that. We don't give it energy. We just give energy to the space instead, to the gap between two thoughts. And slowly we get used to go like, oh, wow, slowly the whole system realizes, yeah, actually, look, I exist. I am in this moment of space. Actually, it's the first time I am, because when we're thinking, we live in a virtual reality. We live in our thoughts that we create. So when the thought stops and we allow ourselves to be in emptiness, for example, you will experience life very differently. You experience life for the first time, maybe. But after three, four, five, ten seconds, you know, another thought arrives. It's okay. Again, just watch it. Because in the moment you watch it, it will stop again, that thought. And you are again in the space. Hmm? It's not difficult. But to break the habit and the identification with that habit is difficult. Or let's say it takes work. It's a work of being constantly attentive and aware to bring awareness to the inner movements that are happening inside of us. The more awareness I bring, the more awareness arises in me and it's present, the more I notice that I'm thinking, for example. So the more often I'm breaking that pattern, over and over and over, I break that pattern, that habit of thinking. And familiarize myself with what it's like to be in a space where there is no thinking. And 
start feeling comfortable my whole system even the mind start feeling comfortable with oh it's actually fine i can be without thinking actually it feels even better i feel so peaceful i even feel jo more joyful there's less worrying i feel more present you start feeling how good it is for you to be in sp in that space of no mind and so the whole system gets used to it so you break a habit and you create another one which is not really a habit but is actually you relearning to just be to be present it's not actually even difficult the process is simple but because it has to be done over and over and over maybe we could say well yeah maybe that is difficult it's the intensity that it requires the intensity of awareness that it requires that might seem difficult but the process itself is very simple And even that difficulties becomes less and less because the more your awareness grows, the more you can't help it to be aware, you see. That's the beauty of this process. It's not an effort and it's not work anymore at a certain point. It's just the natural, natural quality of your awareness that has been awakened to the point that it's taking over. So all the space that was going in thinking mind is going into presence. And it gets easier and easier. But in the beginning to break that habit, it is difficult. Because it's been there for many, many, many years. Hmm? We are trying to break our identification. No, I exist because I'm thinking. Cogito ergo sum. And we are switching that around and said, I exist because I'm not thinking. I am because I'm not thinking. Yeah, the whole system, the whole society has supported the thinking mind not only supported as created in a way the thinking mind yeah because the egoic mind is a byproduct a creation of a society by society means parents friends relatives teachers priests politicians tv newspaper <laughs> whatever the society has been offering to you to your mind has created your mind has shaped your mind so the egoic mind is a product of society of the world that's that's also why that identification is so strong yeah if you go to a little tribe in the middle of africa or or on the himalayas or wherever it is in, in, in mongolian people they're not so identified with thinking mind because they've been growing up in a society, in a, in a world, their little world, that is not as much supporting the thinking mind. Yeah, maybe they support more intuition, they support more uh, bodily sensation, perceptions. You know, they're tuning, you know, we say they're really tuned in they're very in harmony with nature with their surroundings hmm. thinking is not so so important to them and so they're not so identified because their whole society their little society in which they lived is not supporting that as much is not creating that as much so we are a little bit we have a harder work to do yeah we're a little bit more trying to swim upstream in a certain way because we live in a world that it's, it's it's living in the mind yeah and function through it 
and we are seeing what a big mess that has created <laughs> yeah we are coming hopefully to an end soon but the end can be quite hard because it's like a beast that doesn't want to die you know and so in the last moment before dying is just trying whatever he can to just still be alive mm. so it moves very awkwardly and he hits left and right wherever he can I don't want to die but it is dying but this is in a very historic important time because we are coming to the end of a cycle it's a cycle that has been dominated by the mind and the egoic mind and particularly the masculine male egoic mind so it has created a big mess hopefully will not create more mess even though it's trying to and after this cycle is complete we'll move back you know towards more of a, a way of living that gives more space to something else that is not the thinking mind a little bit more back like those little tribes we were, we were talking to yeah where there's more space for feeling heart, perceptions, sensitivity, love, love for each other and for oneself. So more balance will be there again. But this is a challenging time to live through. but because it's so challenging and because it's so obviously crazy <laughs> because that's what it is you look at the world and you go like this the world is going banana man or at least the people that are pulling the thread of that world yeah so because it's it's a mirror and the mirror is reflecting something that is quite horrible and crazy so it becomes easier for a seeker for somebody that is interested in in their their truth it becomes easier to see that reflection and see like well, wait a second i'm not that i'm not interested in that so in a way because the mind is a byproduct of that world, of that society, you're saying, I'm not so interested in my mind. Yeah, that's what you're doing energetically. <laughs> and you see when your mind gets hooked to that world, you see it more clearly, it's more obvious. Because getting hooked to that world brings such an anxiety and so much suffering that you can only notice it it's so easy to notice it isn't it when you start getting lost into that movie there's just anxiousness and, and, and unhappiness and everything is unstable and the more you get lost in it the more you feel like you're going crazy or you're like it's very uncomfortable, isn't it? So it's a beautiful moment because it's a very clear mirror of when you get into your mind, which means getting into the world. <clears throat> and when you step out of that movie and you go like, whoa, I don't want that horror movie <laughs> because it's a horror movie. That's what it is. I don't want that. I am not that. I'm something else. I am what exists between two thoughts. And so you go back to your center more often because you're supported by a crazy world 
that in a way it allows you, it helps you to come back to center as often as you can. So it's a precious time. Challenging on one, on one end, but very helpful on another. Yeah? Our awareness can crystallize and accelerate in its flowering more. Everything is moving faster. It's not a coincidence that Osha said more people became enlightened during times of deep crisis in the world than in, than in any other time on the planet. I can see why. Now uh, I am in it and I can, I can see why. Because that challenge, you know, this challenging world is pushing me to find that place that is not involved with that. That space that is, let's call it my center, where I go like, oh God, healthy, this is healthy, peace being joy again yeah and the moment I move I move out of that the contrast is so obvious there's so much madness everything is so distorted isn't it you can see how distorted everything is every information that comes to you is distorted manipulated you feel like you're falling in the in the dark shadow world it's true you are and then you move out and come back and it's like oh sunshine again <laughs> uh, it's our little Sri Lanka, inner Sri Lanka you know peace sunshine nature suddenly suddenly you are you have space again to connect with what is real you know suddenly you hear a bird singing that you couldn't hear before because you were so lost in thinking about the end of the world <laughs> yeah then you go in a forest and you go like oh my god so beautiful you're back you see the snow falling, yeah, like Nicole. And you go like, wow, so beautiful. And you go out and you go like, so silent. Oh, how beautiful that silent is. Mm -hmm. So suddenly you're back to enjoy life, connecting to life. You're back to existing, to being. And you're out of that matrix, that virtual reality that the world is. So that's our practice to remove ourselves, remove our identification from the matrix. And our mind is a byproduct of the matrix. So working on that, practicing that, breaking the habits of feeling I am the mind, I am the thinking mind, is the biggest, most important work we can do in this moment. More people will able to do that, the more the world also will change. Because it's our identification with the mind on many levels that creates that reality. Hmm? If those people that pull the threads would stop being identified with their mind as well. They wouldn't 
pull the threads in that way anymore. Because they pull the threads because they are lost in their egoic mind. That's it. People that are creating wars, people that are hankering for power over others, controlling the world, they're just lost in their egoic mind. What else? So the world is what we create through our thoughts, through our way we think. So the more and more people get disidentified from their egoic mind, the more we create an alternative reality. You know, just like we break a habit. So suddenly we realize, oh, reality is not that virtual reality that is my thinking mind. It's in between two thoughts that I really exist. Where I really can feel life, feel myself, feel others, feel the world, feel nature, feel existence. I can only feel it in that gap. Hmm. so we're not here to change the world step out of that you're here to change yourself not even change yourself retrain yourself we cannot change the world if we don't change ourselves first and if you keep thinking that way you'll never get anywhere you know we're not missionaries <laughs> and anything you can try to change the world yeah maybe you put a little bandit on a huge wound it's not gonna make any difference that wound has to go to the to gangrene has to just <laughs> let all the pus go out it has to go through its, it has to complete its process and that's what is happening now, all the past is coming out. It has to go through its cycle. So whatever we can do, yeah, maybe it can help a little bit temporarily, but on a long run it's not going to help. What it's going to really help if everybody does his own homework. Then we're really putting foundation down for something to change on a deeper level. I mean, really change for good, not like for a few weeks or a few months. And you can do both too. Yeah, you can be a missionary and help in the world but make sure your priority is your own work maybe out of that you will feel overflowing to help the world beautiful and then let it overflow but remove that idea that the most important thing is to fix the world no because the world is you <laughs> you have to fix yourself first or nothing is going to change So, the fixing is what I told you. The fixing is disidentify from the mind that the world has created and is taking over, as taking over all our inner space and our identification with who we are. Realize that that is a byproduct of a sick society, sick world, we can say. And no matter how useful it can be to function in the world, we have to move our identification from that thinking mind to being. That's it. You can still use your mind, don't worry, it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> It's still going to be there and you'll be able to use it to function in the world even better. Because it's going to be 
not so charged with negative emotions. It's going to be a clean mind. It's going to be sharper. When you need it, it's going to be available and more ready to be used. But your identification from it is going to be removed slowly. It's going to be very different way of living. Mm-hmm. And you feel it. You feel it as you practice, no? Slowly it's happening. You see, sometimes it becomes obvious when other people, you see other people that are so identified with their mind, you see it cl- more clearly now, no? They are also a mirror for us. It's like, oh my God, poor guys, they're so lost <laughs> in their belief system. They're so lost in their mind. Beautiful. Let's be grateful to them that they're mirroring that back to us. It's like, oh yeah, that's where I was not long ago. But now I have enough distance that I can see reflected from them. Yeah, that's also beautiful. So, my friends, this is what has been offering, offered to us in this life and in, in this time. Let's make the best of it. Because if we don't do it, I don't know who's going to do it. <laughs> you know? And we're not alone, you know? There are many millions of people in the planet that are doing the same work. It's not only the, the the Tibetan lamas in the Himalayas or the guys inside a cave doing the work like it used to be. There's millions of people in the world doing the work. More and more. So we're part of that big wave that is growing, rising. Feel good about it. Feel good that you're part of that. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's the most beautiful gift you can give to yourself. And to existence. Because we're part of it. Existence is growing through us. It's evolving through us. It's flowering through us. Our flowering is the flowering of existence, too. And the more you move in this direction, the more you feel that heaviness, that that old, atavic, ancient heaviness that is slowly releasing your soul. The heaviness that comes from that collective subconscious that is the matrix itself too. And you just go like, you start releasing all that heaviness and move back into a world, a way to perceive the world that is light and joyful. And look around at at, at nature and you go like, there's no suffering. It's all, the suffering is a, this kind of suffering, psychological suffering is a man-made product. It's, it's a product of the mind only. It doesn't exist in the world except in man. Look around. The world is not suffering, the, the, the real world, <laughs> not the man-made world. The real world is not suffering. It's blissfully 
existing in harmony with everything. So we go slowly back there in that direction by removing the identification. So that happiness is going to slowly disappear. You're going to feel lighter and lighter. Lighter, literally lighter, almost like your body is getting less dense. You start connecting with the, the spirit more as well, because you're less dense. You start noticing things that you were not noticing before. And life is becoming more, every day, more pleasurable if you keep going in that direction, more joyful, more rich. Every day starts to become a little miracle in itself. How beautiful this day was, or has been. Yeah, in the evening you go like, wow, how beautiful this day was. Can't wait what's happening tomorrow morning, another day. Everything is fresh, everything is new. That's, that's how we have to live. Then it's a life worth living. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to leave you here digesting all this. Yeah, let it sink in and see how to apply it to your day, to every moment. Look, keep looking, keep bringing awareness to every moment and see. how your work is expressing itself. Yeah. And I'll probably see you next Friday. Okay. Kisses to all. Hugs and Namaste. Beautiful to be with you. Thank you.